This week on Life Class. Your life is not set by people's standard. It is set by the word of God. Amen. What people celebrate today is not what they celebrate tomorrow. Today they may look and I mean the world goes round. There was a time they celebrated if you are big, oh that's what they celebrate. Now they say you have to be thin. You better just be yourself. Yes. Praise God. And accept whom God made you to be. Inspiration, finance, entrepreneurship. Life class with Matthew Ashimalowo. This morning we want to conclude our teaching on going from rejection to direction. Going from rejection to direction. And this morning we want to look at want to look at how to beat rejection. Going from rejection to direction, we already established. If you were not here in the previous days when we had this teaching, we already established that in John chapter 1, verse 10 to 12, even God himself came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, to those who believed in his, he came up to those who, is, who are his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. In First Peter chapter 2 verse 7, it says, Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. So we see that God was rejected. Jesus was rejected. The word of God was rejected. The subject of rejection is very hard for many to accept. They can't understand why you will give them rejection, why people will not like them. However, it's important for you to recognize that even God himself was rejected by men. And uh, if that can happen to God, you are in good company. The Bible makes us to understand that men can do things to you. Because somebody called you all sorts of names don't mean you are what they say you are. And you've got to learn to overcome people's rejection. As long as you live in this body, someone will reject you for either being too nice or look better. You know, some people will want to put you down because you look better than them or you are smarter than them. Or you did not every day pay obeisance to them. They will reject you for one thing or the other. And uh, we've seen the consequence if you allow it. We already shared the fact that the worst rejection is self-rejection. When you put yourself down and turn yourself to a doormat. How you, pro how you carry yourself determine how people treat you. But one thing is very clear. Your life is not set by people's standard. It is set by the word of God. Amen. What people celebrate today is not what they celebrate tomorrow. Today they may look and I mean the world goes round. There was a time they celebrated if you are big, oh that's what they celebrate. Now they say you have to be thin. You better just be yourself. Yes. Praise God. And accept whom God made you to be. Celebrate the grace of God in your life. We've already considered why people suffer rejection. The consequence, if you allow it to go on. Many of the people we see who live a life that doesn't honor God. When you go back to the home from where they were raised, it's possible that dad and mom didn't even know that they were treating this girl, this boy, in a way that makes himself to feel rejected. People don't end up in prostitution, in alcohol lifestyle, in drug addiction, if there is no issue somewhere. You would not want to go in the path of self-destruction if a seed was not sown in your life. If you are surrounded by unusual, uncommon love, it is difficult for you to walk away from it. You find then also that if you are surrounded by unusual, uncommon love, you want to give the same. Amen. But then also, even if you were not surrounded by love, you can learn to overcome the devil of your father's house and be a better person. Amen. 
So this morning, I hope we're finishing it. You guys, a long one. If we don't finish, we'll just continue next week. It's better to be thorough than true. Better to be thorough than to go through. That's a statement to write in your notes. Some people just want to go through. It's better to be thorough. How do you beat rejection? Now, if you're sitting here this morning and you're feeling like no one has ever rejected me, you're in the wrong company. Because God himself has been given rejection before. Somebody somewhere has done something to you before. Or you also have felt a certain way. Because even if you feel good, when people keep calling you a certain name, you tend to want to go to the mirror and look at yourself and say, am I really who they say I am? But I want you to know what matters, number one, is whom God says you are. And the Bible in Ephesians chapter 1, we're not going to go through, lists about 12 things you are when you get home. Read Ephesians chapter 1. It calls you accepted. It calls you beloved. It calls you somebody full of the spirit. It calls you a child of God. It calls you adopted. Beautiful descriptions. And they are not just descriptions. They are who you are in God. Glory to God. So how do you beat rejection? Whether it is self-rejection or people's rejection, it's important for you to have a strategy for overcoming it. Or else it will become a canker worm that eats into your destiny. And if you are not totally destroyed by it, it certainly will minimize your life, your impact. Many have not been able to do much because they are still suffering from what somebody many years back called them, what a teacher called them, what a parent called them. It is important to find a wise way to overcome it and not continue to repeat the failure of the past. Very important. Very, very important that you reach the place where you celebrate whom God says you are. Abraham Lincoln, one time president of the United States of America said, I don't think much of a man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. You've got to learn every day. Let even the mistake you made become your teacher instead of becoming the bed of regret on which you lie. Your success in life is mostly important, but it is based on what you put into yourself. What you put into yourself. Because it's what you put inside you that you can fly and rise with the life. Somebody say amen. amen. Birds rise based on what is inside them. Balloons rise based on what's inside them, not the color. You never see a yellow balloon rise higher than a white balloon, or a white balloon rise higher than a black balloon. What determines their rise is the helium inside it. So never put yourself down for various attenuating reasons. Oh, I didn't go to the right school. So what? There are people who went to some dumb, broke, breaking, broke, break down school, and yet came out with flying colors. And there are people who were sent to school where the school fees, their father's annual salary, and yet they failed. Because it's not, it's, it's, it's not the school itself. It's your own dream, your own vision. It's the person you are, praise God. The success in life is, is, is mostly important, but it's based on what you put inside yourself. If you are not willing to change, then you have already reached your maximum level. Because so whatever I share this morning, if it's going to be, it's up to you. If it's going to be, it's up to you. If it's going to be, it's up to you. Even if a person suffers rejection, can throw it back in the face of those who are helping him. Recently, I heard of a young boy, his dad died, his mom is working two jobs, sent him to a private university, but he just is so strong on drugs. His mom is, I mean, and when he takes these drugs, he's so hallucinating, one time he fell and broke his jaw. Mom takes him back to hospital. Everyone's begging him, stay off this drug. He says, I promise, I'll stay off it. As soon as his drug, his job was okay, he's back to it. 
Finally, the university throws him out. So all of the mother's labor has gone. It's now, and it's been in the same course, which you should have done for three, four years. It's now like six years. And it's never, it's not gone. It's not, he hasn't reached the end of it. He's lost everything. Maybe one day he would wake up. You see, if someone doesn't tell himself, I need to beat this thing. You will, if you don't, you will fulfill the prophecy of your enemy. God forbid. I said, God forbid. There are people who are waiting for you to fail. They are waiting to laugh at you. But I pray for you. They will not laugh at you. Rather, they will hear of your success. And in spite of their rejection, you prison. Stay tuned for more. People say things behind you. But my mother used to say, if the ear doesn't hear bad, the heart doesn't feel bad. Leadership, inspiration, finance, entrepreneurship, life class with Matthew Ashimalowo. So let's see how to overcome self-rejection. Start by self-evaluation. You have to learn how to how to, I mean, to overcome rejection, you must start by self-evaluation. Evaluate yourself. In other words, this requires looking thoroughly at what has caused your experience of rejection. We might call what we're doing right now a diagnosis. Diagnosing the problem. You don't start uh, giving medicine until you know the root. You know, many years ago when I was a student in Bible school, I don't know what happened, and I was ill, and they took me from the Bible school to the hospital in town, and this doctor, she had come to my country to work as a doctor. Before I finished describing what's happening, she's already, I said, you have not heard my full story. You have already written the diagnosis. So you've got to realize that you need to diagnose. Today, when people don't know precisely what's wrong with the car, they now have a diagnostic uh, equipment which they will connect to the car and it will tell the full story of what's wrong. Sometimes you may think it's one thing or you may think it's another. You need to diagnose. You need to know the root of why you still feel the way you feel. One of the, re one of the diagnoses may end up being this. You are always listening to the people. For example, if I know the opinion you hold of me, I will never read your text, I will never read your letter, and I will never take your call, I will never watch whatever you write or whatever you do. I don't, because I know the kind of mind I have. I have a very photographic mind. Even the shape of your mouth I would remember. <laughs> so I protect, because the Bible says, Proverbs 4, Verse 23, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the forces of life, the issues of life. A person does not hold a good view of you. You are now saying, let me see what she will say about me. No way. No way. No way. No way. You protect your spirit. You protect your spirit. A man is said to a man who claimed to have like 20,000 members in his church suddenly have lost everyone and they are less than 200. And instead of him to focus on his issue and also is put under, uh, he cannot travel out of the country where he is because they said he was responsible for the loss of money by some people. You know what he does? All he does is go on the internet and abuse Pastor Matthew, abuse uh, Bishop Oedepo, Abuse uh, Pastor Adeboye. I have never watched my own version of his abuse. I don't even know what he says. I've only been told, ah, these guys are easy. Please don't tell me what he said. <laughs> focus. Yes. Praise God. Amen. If you don't focus, you, the, Solomon said if you go around listening, you hear your house help abusing you. <laughs> your house help will be busy saying, this stupid man, very soon he'll come. Where is my food? Where is this, this? People say things behind you. But my mother used to say, if the ear doesn't hear bad, the heart doesn't feel bad. 
Number two, count your blessings. How many of you feel blessed? How many of you know you are blessed? So shout, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it again, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You got to learn how to count your blessings. Go ahead and count your blessings. See what God has done in your life. See your children. See your family. See your wife. See your husband. See the work God has given you. See how God has been faithful to you. See how he has given you things you do not deserve. See how you are alive and strong. See how people who have the money that can buy death could not buy death. And you are here. The man, I mean, the biggest, most lucrative company on earth right now is Apple. And yet the man who started it could not stop death in his 50s. Could not. It's the, way, it's the, most, it's the richest company right now. They have inventions they have not yet launched that is still in store. I mean, their latest phone, the iPhone 10, you have to use your face to open it. You know, the other day I was in Africa and I was, I was doing this. I said, what is that? I said, it's, uh, my, I'm opening my phone. I said, with your face? I said, yeah. <laughs> nice one, isn't it? I didn't buy it too. <laughs> Upgrade from Vodafone. Because I'm, I'm a good customer. <laughs> you, you, you open it with your face. So I show it up to pass the MCC. <laughs> Now I know what next I must buy for birthday. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Number three, adjust your vision to see where God is taking you. Somebody shout, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Say it like you mean it, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Adjust your vision. Adjust to be focused on the direction of the journey of your life. Hebrews 1.3 says, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sin, sat at the right hand of the majesty on high, it being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. In other words, you adjust your image to be the image of the glory of God, the image of the son of God, the image of the one who called you, the image of your father, God. Somebody say amen. amen. Once your vision is clear, you become unstoppable. Adjust your vision to where you are going. Adjust your vision to where God is taking you. Being confident of this one thing. That he who began a good work in you will also complete it. The word complete there is to bring to perfection. So I pray for the perfection of your dream, Amen. the perfection of your vision, Amen. the perfection of your life, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout a bigger amen. amen. So wherever you are seated this morning and whatever your age is, all of us have gone through stages of rejection. Don't sit down there and be singing songs of rejection. Don't sit down there and be angry at the person. If you're angry, turn Channel the anger into achievement. Praise God. Some people become so vitriolic and angry that it eats them up and they are wishing they could kill. That's the reason for murder. That's the reason for killing. That's the reason for committing all kinds of, 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 of atrocities. Sometimes you can even feel angry towards people who are not the issue. One of the films I ever watched, Christian films, uh, based on the story of a man called Charles Colson. Charles Colson was one of Richard Nixon's officers, President Nixon, who went to, who had to, who I think he was impeached or he resigned, one of the two. But his officers, some of them were prosecuted for all the atrocities that were committed in his government. And this particular guy, Charles Colson, went to jail for aiding the president in some illegal actions. While Charles Colson was in prison, some guy came and wants to stab him to death. 
they managed to stop the guy and ask the guy why. He said, you are one of those who made decision on me. I was an FBI agent. I did the right thing. You people listen to the wrong information and send me to jail. And so if I'm in jail, I might as well kill you. Only to, and Charles Colson said, I only heard your story. I'm not part of the decision. So here he is, he's about to commit murder, add to his jail term, kill a man who had nothing to do with his case. When you suffer rejection, you get angry at everybody. If a man has treated you badly, you see all men as devils. You know, some will say, if you see a man and a snake, run for the man. Don't run for the snake. Those are statements of rejection. Those are statements of rejection. And many, many times, some women have passed the same statement to her daughter and poisoned her daughter and prepared her daughter for failure. Is someone hearing me? Because you made mistake in life don't mean everyone around you should make the same mistake. Number four, increase the circle of those who appreciate what God is doing in your life and accept their comment about your life. There are people who love you. Look for people who will give you honest feedback, who will tell you what your strengths are, and maybe the area where you need to work on. Look for them. Bring them into your life. Don't surround yourself with only those who pamper you. You need people who will tell you the truth, who will say, look, the way you are handling this thing is a shame. You need to do this right. know if you celebrate yourself they know if you appreciate yourself and they also know if you don't give the monkeys how they feel and you appreciate who you are that's your so don't listen the Bible said love your neighbor as how Leviticus says it Jesus said it love your neighbor as yourself what does that mean I can only love my neighbor to the level that I love myself. If I don't like myself, that is when I'm sarcastic about everybody. Anyone you see who, when you mention this, oh, that one, rubbish. Oh, that one, it's a thief. Oh, that one, oh, foolish woman. Oh, that one, ah, they, they haven't known her yet. She's a witch of first class witch. By the time she finishes, there's nobody left. Don't miss it. 